Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you this drawing of Thorin Oakenshield from the Hobbit movies and I'm going to be talking about the movies, the book and the drawing itself. I'm going to be showing you how to draw a mountain like this and some other details. So let's have a look. Uh, when doing my sketch I decided to place Thorin uh, slightly to the right of the center or the middle of the paper and I wanted the mountain to go da uh, down the middle and one of the first things that I did once I've done a sketch with a graphite pencil was to go over some of the edges uh, of the mountain with a charcoal pencil where I knew I would have darker lines or darker value and uh, the reason why I did that was because uh, I I knew that I was going to shade around it with vine charcoal so I wanted these lines to remain there so that I don't lose my sketch or so that it doesn't get obscured too much with vine charcoal So now I'm using a piece of vine charcoal and I'm just uh, going over the sky, shading a little bit, very gently. Vine charcoal can be easily erased and blended but still uh, it's a it's a good idea not to press too hard if you want to be able to blend it smoothly now for smooth blending I prefer paper towels or tissues uh, because some other tools they can push the charcoal into the grain of the paper a little bit too much whereas a paper towel if you use it to blend gently just moves the charcoal around and allows you to create a very smooth gray tone area. This uh, sky that I just shaded is going to uh, be a nice background for my mountain because I want the lighter parts of the mountain to stand out. This of course is the Lonely Mountain because I wanted to place uh, Thorin, uh, the king under the mountain, in front of the mountain. Even though Thorin was the descendant of the king under the mountain and he himself was a king under the mountain for a very short time. But as you can see, uh, my light source is coming mostly from above and is slightly uh, slightly more to the right. So the right side of the mountain is getting more light. So the, one of the first things I did was to separate the light side and the shadow side by putting down some more vine charcoal on the left side and to create a shadow side but now even within that shadow side I need to create some variation and for that I'm using a woodless charcoal pencil and my tutilians because I want these details on the slopes of the shadow side of the mountain to be even darker But here and there, even in, even in the area that belongs to the shadow side, I will leave out a few lighter areas, maybe like there are some peaks or rocks which are jutting out and getting more light. Here, as you can see, I'm moving on to Thorin and his hair. And of course, again, I'm using a woodless charcoal pencil, well sharpened, and I'm using a pencil holder because this one is uh, pretty short from sharpening 
A pencil holder is a very very useful tool and it allows you to use uh, more of your pencils, whether they are charcoal pencils or any other, other type of, of pencils. And uh, as you can see, Thorin's hair is mostly dark and of course with charcoal it's easy to draw, to draw uh, dark hair, so it's, ju it's just going to have a few highlights here and there. So after I did that hair, I decided to move on to the light side of the mountain where I created uh, a few more suggestions of rocks and stuff like that. Now as for Thorin's face, I'm going to be using a combination of charcoal pencils and black colored pencils. People often ask me about this combination and why I use it. Well, first of all, uh, wh why don't I use a combination of graphite pencils and charcoal pencils when I'm shading things like that, uh, like his face here? I think that it's because a black colored pencil is darker than a graphite pencil. It's uh, less reflective, so occasionally you can even press a little bit harder. Now the thing is that you have to keep in mind that both the graphite pencil and the black color pencil uh, will be very difficult if you it'll be very difficult to apply anything on top of them so charcoal won't exactly go on top of either a graphite pencil or a charcoal pencil especially if you've uh, pressed harder because the wax from the black color pencil will lubricate the paper and it will be very difficult to apply charcoal. So the key is to make sure that where you know you will combine charcoal with a black color pencil you first uh, put down some charcoal and then you work on top of that with a black color pencil or with a graphite pencil whichever it is that you're using. Or if you're sure that somewhere you won't be using charcoal you just use uh, black color pencil immediately so you have to know these things in advance you, know, you kind of have to plan that but other than that as long as you keep in mind the properties of the pencils that you're working with I, th I think that a combination of charcoal pencils and a black color pencil works pretty fine for me so you can see how I shaded Thorin's face and like I said, the light source is coming uh, mo mostly from above here. The lighting is a little bit confusing. There's a little bit of reflected light on both sides. But I'm not too worried about that. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I'm mostly worried about lightness. So I wanted my Thorin to look uh, like the actor in the movie. Which brings me to the topic of the movies. Because I wanted to say a few words about that. I'm a great fan of Tolkien and the books. I think there's some of the best books ever written, obviously. Tolkien was a genius. The movies, on the other hand, um, they are not quite as great. I thought that the Lord of the Rings uh, movies were pretty good, that Peter Jackson still had a lot of respect for the material and kind of stuck to the story a little bit more he and the script writers didn't get too creative although there was some improvisation here and there which I didn't like but I found that the Lord of the Rings movies weren't bad they were pretty good and obviously the visuals and the music and the casting was pretty good uh, now sadly with The Hobbit they did more of the same and just pushed it even further in terms of uh, in terms of modifying the plot and pretty much pretty much ruined the movies by disregarding uh, a lot of the elements from the Tolkien's story
I thought that there were a lot of things I didn't like and uh, the first movie was tolerable I think I uh, I saw it I saw that certain changes to the plot were made and I thought that it's still not horrible and that uh, maybe they were gonna find a way to fix it and maybe they were just trying to make it more cinematic because obviously when you're uh, making an adaptation you have to make these changes but the movie was obviously visually stunning with great casting and costumes and music and everything but the second movie was already a complete disaster with introducing characters that don't exist in the book and just t turning it into CGI and action-packed nonsense that we see in most of the today's movies and then I just didn't go and see the third movie at all because I've had quite enough. So that's my opinion about the Hobbit movies. My recommendation is that if you if you've read the book, if you like Tolkien and by any chance you didn't see the movies, they're not worth it. Maybe the first one is tolerable, like I said, but it captures some of the atmosphere of the book and it doesn't deviate too much from the story, but other than that uh, other than that, I think uh, they're really not worth it. The casting and the costumes were pretty good, solid as usual. Even though Thorin in the book, the original Thorin was a lot older, probably the oldest member of the company, if I remember correctly. Uh, here in the movie, it was uh, Balin who was the oldest, or at least looked the oldest out of the company and in the book I think Thorin is quite a bit older than Balin but I guess they wanted a handsome actor uh, for the role of Thorin which is okay I guess you have to make certain changes but like I said it was mostly the changes to the plot that I didn't like and the introduction of new characters now let me get back to talking about the drawing. As you can see I've moved on to the, uh, drawing his uh, clothes and the armor. And uh, in order to make it look like it's made of metal I need areas of high contrast uh, to make some parts of it look dark and some shiny. Keeping in mind that my light source is coming from above so uh, I have to make it look like some some of these parts of his armor are, are kind of sticking out and getting getting more light and are reflecting more light. As for the fur, I used both the vine charcoal and uh, woodless charcoal pencil for it, um, and it looks pretty horrible as you can see before you start blending it because first I have to uh, put down all of these strokes to imitate the appearance of the fur and then when I go over it with a brush like this um, you can see that it actually it actually starts to blend really nicely and uh, it, it starts to look a lot softer So another thing I had to do was pull some highlights with a pencil eraser to make that fur, to, to improve the texture of that fur and give it some more depth. And now I'm going to have to do, <coughs> sorry, uh, the armor across his chest and that belt and of course the fur on the right. As you can see I did the lighter slope of the mountain. I used mostly uh, Tautillion for drawing there because I didn't want too many lines, I didn't want uh, too much dark value. Uh, but in, the, in those places where I wanted a little bit of texture and a little bit more value I just went over uh, some of these rocks with a uh, charcoal pencil. 
so I think it turned out okay and as you can see the bottom of the mountain is kind of uh, blended very smoothly and it's kind of fading downwards because I want it to, to look like it's kind of fading into the mist and then I'm gonna make the terrain in the foreground a little bit darker and more defined so now I'm working on his clothes and the armor on his body and trying to imitate the same angular pattern there um, just using mostly my charcoal pencil and also using some erasers to pull some of these highlights so that it looks like it's made of metal. Now obviously I have to do a lot more work on the on this fur here and that needs to be blended nicely and then I have to go over it with some more uh, charcoal pencil work making these uh, tapered strokes trying to imitate the texture and the direction of the hair and then after that I will blend it like I did with the left side and then the final touch of course will be adding some highlights with a pencil eraser so the blending does a couple of things when you draw fur and I talked about this when I was drawing some hairy animals but it does a couple of things uh, one of the first things it does obviously it adds a little bit of value it makes it a little bit darker and then also it makes everything look softer and it removes those rough lines here as you can see I'm going to try to add some more rough terrain in the well not in the foreground but rather in the midground in front of the in front of the lonely mountain and and like I said I, I want the I want it to be darker so that I would have some contrast with the with the lower misty portion of the mountain I just have to decide decide on what kind of shapes I want and I'm also going to try to make it look like um, maybe there's a, there's another slope there and maybe like there's a small path leading up we'll see so I basically placed those rocks in the background and decided to leave it there for now uh, and I decided to put in a little bit more work on his clothes and now I'm moving on to the arms and hands I'm just gonna do a little bit of a little bit of scribbling to lay down some value and see if I can come up with some interesting shapes for the background something that kind of looks like rough terrain like crocs and I'm gonna try to pull some highlights to see if I can make it look a little more convincing and maybe erase a little bit in the middle so that it looks like a path like a path uh, leading uh, towards us and now I'm shading uh, these uh, armbands or gloves whatever they are and they too have the same uh, pattern which is kind of similar to his armor with a lot of these angular shapes but of course I can't capture everything I'm just gonna have to create a few suggestions here and there and pull a few highlights 
so that so that it looks kind of like leather I guess at this point I'm pretty happy with the way his face and the mountain turned out and I think the hardest part of the drawing is done I just have to keep working on the clothes and the equipment and the weapons and this is the Orchrist, the sword and I'm adding some more details to it I'm gonna leave the this uh, part of the edge this side of the sword a little bit lighter so that so that it stands out against uh, the clothes and the background obviously I can't make out everything in my reference photo so I'm just uh, simplifying and improvising here and there a little bit I could go and check what everything looks but it's not really necessary I mean I can just simplify certain details <coughs> I had a really bad cold these days and obviously this drawing was done a few days earlier but I finally got my voice back enough so that I can create a narrated video. Here I decided to make the sky a little bit more interesting and add a few more clouds. I did a I, I, I used a combination of a pencil eraser and a needed eraser. I used the pencil eraser to get some cleaner shapes cleaner edges and then I used the knead eraser to get some softer softer shapes by tapping it and dabbing it a little bit so I think that'll complete the scene and all I have left in terms of background is the portion a small portion in the bottom right but I first have to finish this fur coat and, and, uh, and his left arm so here again as you can see I'm uh, drawing some highlights on that fur coat trying to give, in, give it more depth so that it feels like some of these hairs stand out and this part here I'm also going to try to create some suggestions of rough terrain in the back and here I'm going to try to create an appearance of something that looks like leather leathery texture with, uh, with a few highlights in the middle and just a few details on the hand and the fingers few highlights here and there as you can see I deliberately left a little bit more texture on the terrain in the foreground there's my signature going to move the drawing a little bit so that you can see all of it this is what the mountain looks like I like how the 
those lighter sides of the mountain stand out against the sky and I've zoomed in a little bit so that you can see some more detail on the mountain and on Thorin's face and his fur coat and armor so it was a pretty complex drawing there's the sword right so I'm gonna zoom back out I hope you enjoyed this narrated video and make sure you check out my other videos I have lots of other interesting stuff both Tolkien related and landscapes and some other stuff so you should check that out thanks for watching